Good afternoon. I'm Travis Bricky with TVA PR, uh, Public Relations. And uh, before we get started, I want to go through the format of uh, the press briefing. In just a few minutes, our president and CEO, Bill Johnson, will come out and give you all a, a briefing of um, our progress to date about Boone Dam. Also, John McCormick, Vice President of Safety, River Management, and Environment will come up. Many of you know John um, to brief us on the path forward. Um, after John's briefing, there will be an opportunity for some questions. And then after the, the briefing is over, the press briefing is over, uh, there will be some time for some one-on-one -on -one questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Bill Johnson. Stand back here, Travis. Then I'll be out of the way of that picture. So. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. Three months ago, I met with several of you over at the dam, and we walked the site and sort of discussed the seepage issues, we, seepage issues we're having there. And I told you that day I hope to be back by the end of July to share uh, what else we'd learned in our investigation and what the plan to fix the dam was. So it was July 30th. I made it by the end of the month. Uh, wasn't sure we were going to, but here we are. As Travis said, we have some of our experts with us, John McCormick, uh, River Operations, John K. Meyer, Civil Engineering, Bob D.C., who is the Senior VP of Project and Construction, and a number of our other folks from River Ops and Engineering will help us answer the questions. So just to bring you up to speed, uh, let me summarize the situation here. Back in October of last year, through a routine dam inspection, we discovered a sinkhole near the earth embankment of Boone Dam. We fixed that. Uh, but a couple days later, dam inspectors found sediment seeping from the riverbank below the dam. And you can see that in this picture here. Now, longtime residents here know that sinkholes aren't a surprise. Given the porous limestone geology that exists here, it's pretty common. But the location of this sinkhole and the presence of the sediment, the muddy water here, really raised the possibility of a safety concern with the dam. So we assembled a team of our experts, of experts from around the industry, and the initial investigation showed that we had internal erosion, a phenomenon called piping, where voids from water flowing through the dam, you're actually getting more of a stream-like effect than just seepage. And internal erosion is one of the leading causes of dam failures around the world. So we knew that we had to do something here to protect the safety of the public and our workers, particularly the downstream risk. So we did some things very quickly. We reduced the uh, pressure on the dam by lowering the lake level about 10 feet below normal winter pool. We've had ongoing on-site, around-the-clock inspectors keeping surveillance on the dam. We installed an automatic network of sensors to monitor pressure and movements that might occur in the dam itself. We built a filter at the base of the dam to prevent more sediment from keeping through. And we implemented our emergency action plan to protect public safety. Now, since November, we've conducted a very intensive investigation of the soil and rock around the dam. We've done a lot of core boring. We've done more than a mile of borings out there. We've done dye studies, trying to figure out where the water is going through the dam. We've mapped the underground geology. We have a pretty extensive geographical information system that helps us visualize where the problems are. One of the key findings so far is that water is flowing through the foundation from multiple sources and in multiple directions. It's actually seeping through porous rock, rainwater upstream through porous rock through the dam. And what this data tells us, what this information tells us, is that we need to do a comprehensive and durable fix. And in a minute, John McCormick will explain the approach we're going to take, uh, after which we do a thorough environmental review, which we always do as a federal entity. But before we get to those details, I want to tell you our two overriding priorities here. Two overriding priorities. First is safety. Safety of people downstream of the dam, safety of people upstream of the dam. And we commence this work, we will have workers on the structure itself. So number one, we're going to do it safely. And the second priority, is to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to affect the best repair we can. You know, I don't want to be doing this ever again, or at least for a very long time. 
So we're going to get this done and do it right so the people of this community can enjoy the lake with less likelihood of future disruption. You know, this dam, this asset, and this community are important to us. And we know the dam and the reservoir are important to the community and the economy of the area. So we're going to do this right, and that process is going to take a little time. We're estimating, based on similar projects in the industry, five to maybe less than seven years to get this work done. Now, we have some experience with this in our own dam fleet, but we don't have any of this scale or complexity. Others have had very similar experiences. It's taken them seven to nine years to fix this. So one of the things we've done, our great engineering folks, studied what others have done and found a way to maybe do it better, a little faster. But five to less than seven years is the current estimate. Uh, but I think when John gives you a solution, this is going to be a solution that will affect a very good repair and ensure integrity of the dam for a long time to come. Now, we do know, our studies confirm that keeping the water at a lower level has reduced the risk downstream, reduced the pressure on the dam. So lowering the lake when we did was a very prudent step, and as a prudent step, we will maintain until it's safe to do otherwise. On the cost front, we project early projection, but this is a multi-hundred million dollar project. Two to three hundred million is our early estimate. We do have some experts here who, time after time, beat the budget and the schedule. Uh, but that's where we're at, at the moment, two to three hundred million. As we get into the project, as we do more work, we'll know more. And of course, we'll keep you abreast of all that. So Mr. McCormick, if you want to tell us what the, what the plan is, that would be a good thing. And I'll get out of your way. Thank you, Bill. Good afternoon. And I just want to say thank you for all of you being here. I really appreciate, and as we said in the last time we met, I'm um, getting our messaging out. So I appreciate you all being here. I want to talk to you about our proposed fix or recommendation on the permanent repair or long-term repair of the dam. I want to just build on something that Bill had said. We were able to take lessons learned from other folks that have had to deal with similar issues. And what you're seeing is the, is the result of being able to take those lessons learned, take those best practices, and apply them here. Our proposed fix is a composite seepage barrier. That's the engineering term for it. What it really is is a concrete wall that we're going to install along the earthen dam. When we talk about the dam, I need to go back. It's not the concrete section. We're talking about the earthen embankment, from where the concrete section starts to the east side to where it goes past the beach area, or the right rim we like to refer to it. We're going to do this in three stages. And I'll to go through each of the three stages as, we move, as, we move, as I move forward through this presentation. But it's really a combination of grouting and, and cementing that we're going to be doing in different levels within the dam subsurface or in the uh, bedrock. The first stage is going to require us to draw multi, or drill multiple columns down through the earthen embankment, the entire length of the earthen embankment. We're going to insert, now these are very busy pictures. I like to work from here because it gives you a really good idea of what we're looking at. This is the top of the, the crest of the dam, and we're actually drilled down into the epicarse level. And that's the pinnacles that you have seen or we have spoke to in the past. We will inject low mobility grout. So what is low mobility grout? If, best way to describe it, if you think about cold toothpaste, is what the consistency that we will inject into that epicarst area. Then as you can see by the waterfall, the illustration here, the water flowing, the intent is to reduce the amount of water that's actually moving under, the, under the, the dam itself. To give you an idea, we're looking at potentially doing as many as 500 bores into that dam during this phase. This phase is going to tell us an awful lot. It's going to, it's going to tell us, beside the test grouting that's going to be starting next week, and I'll talk more about that, but this is really going to tell us as the, as the progress of the dam, because there's still a lot of unknowns as we move into the project. The second stage is actually, once again, we're going to be drilling at the top of the dam. Once again, you'll be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of almost up to 700 borings through the, through the whole earthen dam. And we'll inject high mobility grout. And high mobility grout, think about chocolate milk. That's about the consistency of it. It'll flow in. We're going to go much deeper. In this phase here, we'll be going at maybe as deep as 350 feet into competent bedrock. And as it flows in, it's going to fill in a lot of the cracks and crevices as, as, um, as we move forward. The third and final phase is 
the installation of the concrete wall or the composite seepage barrier. Once again, it'll run the whole length of the earthen embankment. It'll be in a neighborhood of probably between two and 300 feet deep. And it will be as wide as several feet, the thickness of it. The completed project, as Bill said, our research and benchmark has told us between five and seven years, between 200 and 300 million dollars. So I feel very confident about this because of the team we put together. Our engineers, our geologists, and our consultants have worked on other major projects. Wolf Creek, the Army Corps of Engineers, Center Hill, Army Corps of Engineers, and various dams in our organization. There's, many, there's much work being done. When we talk about the window for time, we're doing an environmental review right now as we speak. So that has already been initiated and started. Construction work cannot begin until that environmental review is complete. That environmental review will complete in the beginning of 2016. Heavy construction will start in, the, in the early 2016. In the meantime, while we're, going, while we're doing the environmental review, you will see test grouting. So next week, we will actually do some test grouting. The test grouting is going to be just off the toe in the beginning, and then we're actually do some experiments experimental test grouting that's going to occur on the crest of the dam. Um, so you'll see large equipment. So it's not like we're sitting here. And I, and I, want, to, I want to emphasize, I get comments about the length of time it's been taking us and how quickly we've been moving. So the easiest way to me compare it is if you've built a house, you don't just start building that day. You don't start putting nails in the wood that first day. You have to get your land surveyed. You have to get permits. You have to dig your foundation. You have to pour your foundation. You've got to build your house. It takes time. Heavy construction, and especially on something as complex as this, will not start until early 2016. In the meantime, you'll see the test grouting. We'll continue to do monitoring. We'll continue to do inspections on the dam. And that's the end of my part of this presentation. So I'm going to turn it back to you, Bill. Thank you, John. So a long and expensive project, and we realize the impact that this is going to have on those who live in the area, people who want to enjoy the waterfront property on the reservoir, those who have businesses related to the reservoir, and the community at large, which benefits significantly from the economics of all this. So we're committed to doing what we can to help mitigate those problems. We've already taken some, address, some steps to address some of these impacts some uh, additional ramps to get boats in the water, some parking areas, roads, temporary beach, those kind of things. We're teaming with TWRA to make sure that the fish habitat remains good. I did see yesterday at a meeting, uh, a person from up here showed me a picture of two giant bass he caught in a recent tournament here, so the fish habitat is still good, but uh, we're gonna make sure that that continues to be. We put some buoy markers on the lake to make sure people know where it's safe to use your boat. I just want to put in a safety plug here. If you're using a boat on the reservoir, be careful. Uh, we have a new interactive website. Go to tva.gov and look for Boone Drawdown. A weekly update letter, and we have a Twitter feed. We'll also soon have a community relations person up here full time. We also have speakers who are available if anybody wants to have a community meeting and have a speaker come. And uh, in fact, we're going to do that tonight. We're going to have a community meeting, I think, at 7 o'clock at the Millennium Center. 5.30. 5.37. I get mixed up on my time zones. Um, let me go back to what I said earlier. Our main two objectives here, let's do this safely, make sure everybody's safe, and let's do it right for the long term. Those are our objectives. We have a good plan. We have good people to execute that plan. I think now would be a good time to take your questions. Mr. McCormick, why don't you one, come up here with me? One quick thing before we get started. Um, Jim has a microphone. We have a lot of folks who are recording this. Please wait for the microphone to get to you. Please say your name and who your affiliation is with. And I'll remind you one more time, I do have thumb drives with all of these illustrations on there, high resolution photos, and some B-roll video. So make sure you get that for me before you leave. We'll go ahead and start with questions. I think Josh was first. I'm Josh Smith with WJHL TV here in Johnson City. Uh, I just spoke with a marina owner as she left the meeting that you held prior to this. She was almost in tears. What is going to be done to help 
first the business owners, those seven marina owners, those multiple business owners that have permits to operate on your lake, and then also those people who have property on the lake, who purchase lakefront property, who are paying taxes on lakefront property, and now live beside it of a mud hole. So I have no intention of minimizing or pretending that impacts don't exist from this. They do exist. Um, and we're going to do what we can. So on the marina owners, we are developing a program of low or no interest loans for them because they're the most directly affected businesses by this. Um, what else are we going to do? You, do? you know, we're continuing to evaluate our options. But this is an event that's nobody's fault. Nobody did anything wrong here. This is a function of geology, of construction work, uh, practices in the other old days, a function of aging. And so there are impacts here. I think everybody's going to have to deal with some of the impacts. Next question. I've interviewed you before, so I promise I'll give up the microphone right. at some point. Go right ahead. Uh, five to seven years. Uh, how conf I know you're confident in that uh, that date range, or else you wouldn't be issuing it today. Uh, but I've looked, and some of these other dam projects that you've compared this to were seven to eleven, even longer than eleven years. Uh, I think I saw. Is there a possibility this could go beyond seven years? And what would happen that makes that? go beyond the seven-year range. Yeah, so in any time you get into a major project, it can extend the time. But I have a couple reasons for confidence, actually significant confidence in this plan. Several of the reasons are standing up here with me and Mr. DC. Uh, we've done a lot of projects over the years together, and these people know what they're doing. We have great expertise at TVA and have collected expertise around the world about this. Uh, so can it go longer than that? Yes. Do I expect it to? Uh, my goal is to do this in a five-year range. Now, John talked about some of the constraints up there. You've got a narrow platform. It's not that big at the top of the dam. You know, there's, uh, but yeah, I have, I have a high degree of confidence that uh, this team and the people we have assembled with them will get this done and done right in that time frame. If I could say a couple words, one of the advantages we have on this project is we're not starting from ground zero. The Corps of Engineers at the Center Hill uh, restoration project, which is very, very similar in size and uh, magnitude as this, it took them uh, seven years on the heavy construction, 10 years for the project. But we're not starting where they're starting. We're starting where they finished. We've got all their lessons learned. The Corps of Engineers have been very, very generous with us. We have all their specs, their drawings. We have this very well researched with, with this team that Bill's talking about, and we have their data. And so we've put a plan together that capitalizes on the lessons learned that they had. So we're very confident that we can do it, provided nothing unforeseen. You don't know what you don't know, but we're very confident in the, the schedule that we have on the five years. Anissa Hamour, I'm also with uh, WJHL. I, I also spoke with a marina owner this afternoon um, a, a little bit about the loans that you were just mentioning. Um, so there won't be any kind of grants or relief money to, to these folks who, some of them are thinking about closing or selling their businesses. And um, that what he communicated to me was that what's turning into a five-year impact with a loan would end up being a 20-year monetary impact on their business. Um, it, can you talk to that a little bit? No, as I said, there, there will be impacts here, and we will do what we can, but there are limits to what we can do, you know? Uh, and one of the limits we have is to the extent we give relief to somebody, somebody else in our system is paying for it, right? That's the way our business works. Uh, we are a not-for-profit. We collect what we spend, and so we're still thinking about all our, our options. Our real focus so far has been getting the fix in place, getting ready to go to work. We've done some work in the community on the boat ramps and other things, but I would say we're still early in our thinking about a lot of that. Jim, got Don over here to your. Don Helmus, Hellman Cumulus Media here in the Tri-Cities. Um, is there a potential impact for rate payers who get their electricity from companies that purchase the electricity from you? We intend to fund this out of our normal operating revenues. Um, 
I don't see any potential rate increase as a result of this. You know, if you take 300 million and spread it over five years, actually we manage our business in a way because you have these kind of events um, that we should be able to do this out of normal operating funds. Any more? Josh. Did it, did it? Okay, over here, yeah. Uh, Christy O'Connor with News 5 WCYB. Um, I know you said the ramps were uh, an improvement. Um, I, the last we had heard was you were getting permits to start building these. I was just wondering if you had an update on the progress of those being put in. There was a young lady in the back of the room named Rebecca. When you're done here, she will answer that question for you. And she looks good on camera. <laughs> Sounds to me like this could be something, Josh Smith, WJHL again, it sounds to me like something, this could be something that employs a lot of people. You're going to have to go through a contract process of bidding it out. Can you explain to me where you are in finding the team that will repair the dam? Will these be local jobs? Is there an opportunity for people who live here to apply for the work here? Yeah, so we haven't engaged in that process yet. That will be one of the things we do next. Maybe we have engaged in it, but uh, let, me, let me turn to Mr. Kmeyer. We are working very hard on this to get to get a start on the project. We have to wait until the environmental review is done, which won't be finished until January. But we are lining ourselves up to be successful. So yeah, we already have a contractor on site. There's only three companies in the world that do this kind of remediation. That's the complexity we're talking about. And we have one of those firms on site now to do the test grouting program that we're doing. And we are, next month, as a matter of fact, going out for bids to, to procure a couple of more uh, contractors to line them up for the next year's work. Uh, there will be a small contracting, a small business uh, plan put in place, so we will be reaching out. But the major contracting work is, you know, worldwide type of company. But we will reach out and buy as much services as we can locally that makes sense to the project. And he's... Anissa Hamor with WJHL again, is that on? Oh, sorry. Um, my question, you're saying that this is an issue with geology. I know that the dam has been there for decades, but is this issue something that could have been foreseen at all Went before the dam was put in with, um, you know, evaluating the site beforehand, or is this something that developed over time that could not have been foreseen? Um, this is something that, this dam was built in the way things were built in the 50s. Uh, could have been foreseen. I do not believe so. There's no way we could have known it. Uh, dams were built in this period and this geology were built this way. So I don't think there's any, any way to have foreseen it, prevented it. It's a function of age. We do, we do multiple inspections. So we have a formal which is done on a five-year basis and an intermediate which is done on a year basis. And then we train all of our employees both at the site and facilities, anybody that's going to be on site. And, and our dam safety program being very robust is what found this issue. And, and our quick response is getting us to the place today where we actually have a final uh, repair option. Don, right over here. Don Hellman again. Uh, when you talked about the timetable of five to seven years, you talking about the economic studies or the uh, ecological study starting in, in uh, 2016, does that timetable five to seven years begin now or once the actual construction work begins, when does that start? As it's far as their boss thinks, it starts now. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it starts now. <laughs> we have time for a few more questions and don't forget we have some time for some one-on-ones in a few minutes. So go ahead, Josh. I've tried to stop moving water before, and it's not really easy to do. And I, going back to right at the very beginning of what your presentation, Mr. Johnson, you said that water was coming from multiple sources and moving in multiple directions. Um, to the people who are watching this on our website right now and to the people who will see the news coverage tonight, I would think they would think that seems like an impossible task uh, to do. Uh, and there are some, as we shared when you were here in April in this community, who think without any real concrete facts to go on, that Boone Dam can't be fixed. It, and I know you said that's not a, 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 an option that you're willing to live with, but is there a possibility that these solutions you're proposing won't work? And is there any case proof of, of where that's happened? I'm going to let one of these gentlemen answer that. But the answer is uh, we can fix this, and, and we will fix this. 
So let me help them with the answer there. I will, and then John can chime in a little bit. Um, if you looked at if you look at the way this drawing is, and and if you look at where the dam actually sits, we talk about the right rim. So if you're familiar with the area, if you go up to where the visitor center are, where the water towers, we're speaking about that area. Um, one of the things we found out in March, um, while we we're doing this investigation, we're trying to understand the different water patterns, and water flows. If you can imagine, and this is on the downstream side of the dam, this right rim. In March, when we were having so much rainfall and we were having the snow melt, if you can if just picture underground caverns or voids. And as these surface water, actually the water table started coming up, we actually saw water. And if you see the red, you very can hardly see it in here. It's intended to show that the water was actually flowing from the right rim back into the dam area. John will talk about percentage, so I'll steal his thunder on this. The, the composite wall, the co concrete cutoff wall, takes the reservoir out of play going, going in the future. Sinkholes are something that is going to be happening in East Tennessee. It's just part of what the geology. But we know once we put this concrete cutoff wall in, it takes the reservoir or that piping that Bill spoke to from upstream to downstream out of the picture, and it's a 100% will stop it from happening. Now we can deal with the issue of water flowing on the downstream, which is a whole different project. Once again, not having an impact on the reservoir, having to bring the reservoir down again in the future. So Boone's now earthen and concrete. Is it basically all going to become one large concrete structure? Is that, or is that an oversimplification? No, I don't think it's an over, it, it's, it's good layman's term. So if you think about the concrete structure that currently exists, this next concrete structure will run almost a thousand feet and connect to it, but you still have the earthen embankment on the other side. So we have, we do have some, but. Yes. You just won't see this. It'll be in the ground. That's right. That's the big difference. There, there are cheaper ways to try to fix this kind of problem. There are cheaper ways, but they're not as reliable. We are picking, the, the solution that is picked is the one that will give us the highest level of confidence that we have resolved this issue for the long term. And the Center Hill project is an 11 year project, is that, is that correct? Uh, we the, were out the there, and they finished earlier this year, it was a 10 year project, seven years for the heavy construction, about $400 million, but they had a lot of problems, a lot of glitches, and they've shared all that with us. So we have optimized their schedule and, and, and <clears throat> changed the contracting approach to, to take advantage of their lessons learned and to do this better and faster, and just as safe. One more while I have the mic. Are you going to keep uh, doing power generation at Boone Dam? Will that continue during all of this? Yes. There's a slight reduction at times in the power generation, but we continue to be able to generate power out of it. Okay, last one, Don, over here to the right. Concerning the water level, uh, as this project goes through, is do you foresee the level having to remain where it's at throughout the entire project, or is there a period of time where it might be able to ra be raised even slightly? So we don't actually know the answer to that question. Uh, I would like to be able to say we're going to raise it in increments as we go along. What we're going to do is study things as we go along. We know at the current level it is stable. The pressure on the dam is OK. Uh, so I don't want to give anybody the impression that the plan is to raise the level. We will evaluate this. But the first thing we're going to do is make sure that dam is safe. All right, thanks for everybody's questions. We'll conclude this portion of it. Um, everybody have a great day.